this day was coming, just didn't know when. So we're, we're 1200 something hours on to her. And Jumbo has an oil leak coming out of the breather. My suspicions are uh, piston ring. And uh, we're at Silver City, Grants County uh, Airport in New Mexico. Going to go use the courtesy car, going to town, get some tools, start pulling the pistons, or the pistons, but the uh, spark plugs out and seeing what we got and grab some oil. Go from there. So, Kim, what's your thoughts on today's uh, plot twist? Um, I'm not uh, too thrilled about it, actually. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so at all. We're, uh, we're out in the middle of nowhere with uh, really nobody near us to help us. And um, we may very well have an engine that will not fly again. Exciting, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. That is true. It is an adventure. Yeah, we, we knew that was always a possibility in an airplane that you could be stranded somewhere and have to deal with an engine swap. But Captain Dave did a fine job uh, landing. Approaching a railroad crossing. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Let's go find us some tools. All right. This is a current situation. I switched out. I'm sorry. I drained the oil into this Harbor Freight bucket that I just bought. And we're going to measure how much is in there. That's how much I drained out of the engine. So the engine still had plenty of oil in it. I also uh, drained out the oil filter or it switched oil filters. And then I put three and a half quarts of zero, oops, zero W30. How did I get zero W30? Shit. I don't mean I'm switching it again. Um, anyway, so that's zero W30. Ah, damn it. Okay, cleaned it up, checked the oil, switched out the oil filter, drained the oil into a five gallon bucket. Then after I changed out the oil, I put the bucket back into the can and almost got all the oil back. So what I'm seeing is just some burped out, but some is more than I want. But some burped out, and it may just be because of the high RPMs and density altitude that we played together at. So it's all cleaned up. We're gonna run it, test it um, for a while, and see where we get. All right. Good evening. It's October 23rd, and it looks like Jumbo is gonna need a heart transplant. Seems like all my friends. Have are gonna need a heart transplant this month. Yep, she's uh, closing in on uh, closing in on 1,200 hours, and uh, today she started blowing smoke out the exhaust, and we ended up landing back at uh, the airport here in New Mexico. And after uh, some testing, it uh, showed that she was not airworthy at this point. So. Uh, the people at the airport, uh, the FBO, one of the private pilots, they set us up in another hangar for the all the way up till the end of the month. Uh, contacted Viking Aircraft Engines, John and Alyssa, and uh, based on my options, I decided to go with uh, just replacing the core. So they're going to send me a um, an engine, and I'm going to swap out all the components. Put it back in and get it going. I got, I've got to get this done by the end of the month because that's as long as I got the hangar. So unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, we get to fly in another airplane uh, tomorrow and uh, head on back to Houston, pick up the engine, 
throw it in the back of the avalanche, and then head back here to do the engine swap. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see how long it takes to do all this stuff and just what is required when you finally reach, uh, in this case, the TPO of uh, Jumbo's engine. So we're going to document it and just show you what it's all entailed when something inevitably is going to happen. It's mechanical. At some point, it will break. All right, stay tuned. All right, as we're traveling down the road of life here, something when, uh, Kim and I were just discussing is um, any other airplane engine, you have a cylinder go bad, how fast are you going to get back in the air? Lycoming, Continental, Rotex, Corvair, UL, Viking, which one's going to get you back in the air the quickest? Because as you know, on the ground, you're paying to uh, be somewhere that you're not supposed to be long term. You know, hotels, hangar rent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, even though Jumbo is going to need a uh, engine swap, let's see just how quick an engine swap can happen with Viking. It's going to be quick. It's going to be faster than the others. I guarantee that. But uh, I'm going to document it, and we're going to see just how quickly Jumbo gets back in the air. I was hoping Jumbo would make it to uh, the 2000 mark, but <laughs> in all honesty, I did push it very, very hard. So uh, it's really not that surprising. Disappointing, but not really surprising. But on a good note, this is going to be a... Uh, I'm documenting it as much as I can. This is going to be a... Um, a show and tell of how quickly a Viking engine can get back in, or a, a Viking powered aircraft can get back in the sky when the engine decides to shit on you. So, gonna make lemonade out of lemons. I think we got a bit of a storm over there. Here we are over at Petticoat Junction, Green Acres, you name it. Cheers. It's been a long day. What seems to be the problem, Kim? Hey, you rolled down the windows and now they're broken. They won't go up. They won't it's go up. Degrees. We have a two hour drive. Two hour drive <laughs> down dusty roads and the doors, the windows on both sides won't go up. <laughs> ah, good morning. <laughs> Today, Jumbo's going to stay in the hangar awaiting her heart transplant. She's going to go turbo today. And that's the turbo. Here's Jumbo. And there's my flight back to Houston. Or not to Houston, to Albuquerque to catch a flight back to Houston. And Kim is about to take off. trying to get out of here but uh, the rain has another plan so I'm delayed which means I'll probably miss my next flight in Albuquerque to Houston <laughs> and the plot thickens.
Okay, here's one of the things you could have done differently is rent a car, drive to Albuquerque, and I'd have been there hours ago. So, oops, live and learn. Think about a car versus a hop. All right, good morning. Uh, today we're picking up a engine from RNL Transports, about 17 miles from the house. So we're going to get this and then get everything packed up and get on out of here. Okay, so we're here, going to be picking up the engine. Going to have them loaded up in the truck, head on back. Okay, got the package in. Definitely fills up my truck. Not sure how I'm gonna get the engine lift in here. This is gonna be a good one. All right, let's get on the road. Let's get back to the house and figure out how to get an engine lift in the back of the truck. I think I'm gonna end up having to take uh, the cardboard off of that uh, package there to make some room. Okay, first thing I need to do is get this uh, engine out of the box so I can make more space for the engine lift to travel with. So here it is, just raised up off uh, the crate, or the pallet. Gonna put it uh, back on the floor and I should, may, I should be able to get the covers back on the avalanche, keep the weather out of it, so that'd be cool. All right, got everything in here. The engine, all the accessory oils, and some other cool stuff. Thank you. And gas cans, engine lift. And got all my tools. Miscellaneous tools, cans, sliders, torque wrenches. Everything I can possibly think of. And I'm sure there'll be uh, many things in here that I don't need. Better to need it or want it and have it. You know. <laughs> uh, okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a list together of everything I use, so that uh, I don't have to carry so much stuff next time. But better safe than sorry. Uh, it's 7:30 something or whatever near San Antonio. We're headed back to New Mexico. Here's our weather. It's crap, but we're dry. Four and a half hours into it. We got another, I don't know, 10 hours to go. You know, one thing you got to enjoy about this part of the country is the speed limits. The way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Pretty cool. Welcome to El Paso. Another big city with mountains. Okay, now we've got a border inspection. This is where we're gonna lose Cam. <laughs> Sorry, Cam. <laughs> I'm not getting out. When he has ask if you're American, say see. Si. Or go, okay?
All right, two hours, 48 minutes is what it took me to cut all the zip ties and take all the parts off out of the way to be able to pull the engine off. So all I'm, all I'm remaining is the four engine mounts and then I'll switch to that engine, swing it up here, and then I'll reinstall all the other items from Jumbo's previous heart and put it all back together. So two hours and 48 minutes is what it took me to take this apart. Good morning. Yesterday we drove just under 14 hours with the engine in the back of the truck from Houston to New Mexico, uh, Grant Airport. And we spent a couple, almost three hours pulling everything apart and uh, it's ready for the engine to be pulled off. So we got a good night's sleep. Well, we got some sleep and looked for, looking forward to a morning breakfast at the Holiday Inn and their ovens are broken. So there is no breakfast here this morning. So it's bagels and whatever this fresh coffee machine is here. Ah, so the adventure and plot twist continue. So this morning we're going to um, pull the engine, replace the engine, and try to put everything back together and get it started. Let's see how long that takes. Okay, working on the engine and Joe Millette shows up from Las Cruces. Alright, why'd you have to go break Joe, man? <laughs> hey Joe, happened, how you doing? Did you have a good, good fight? Yeah, it's pretty All cool. right. oh, This doesn't look like your zenith. No. <laughs> still missing an elevator. Oh an my iron. gosh. She's little. This thing sucks. Does it? It's no zenith, buddy. No. Well, welcome. Thanks for showing up. Hey, here to help. Any fuel leaks? I'll see Clear. 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 Clear.
Seven hours, 50 minutes. Seven, five, zero is what it takes to pull an engine and replace an engine when you have the help of your friends, Kim and Joe. Thank you guys. All right, let's start her up. Yep. Test number one had some vibration, so we ended up uh, pulling the gearbox all off and uh, switching out the uh, flex plate, flywheel. The other one had some warpage to it. This one's pretty straight. So we're going to try it again. There goes Joe. Hi Joe, thank you for all your help, buddy. We're gonna spin Jumbo around and of course, uh, got another plot twist. Locked the truck, keys are inside, so now we gotta figure out how to get inside. <laughs> ah, excitement never ends. Hey, let's do an engine uh, examination. We'll start on uh, positive side. I didn't change to the quick drain at this point. Three washers, just like it had when I uh, started. No washers up here, just like I'd had when it started. No leaks. Everything zip tied, secured. 
end up running a new th uh, temperature probe wire. That works good. I don't see any coolant leaks. No fuel leaks up here. Everything has play on the rubber donuts there. All of these are torqued, all the mounts. I zip tie my cap. I went back with the cap because it was easier to feel than filling it through the hose. All the intake bolts have been snugged down and the wiring's all zip tied up tight. Still got this old throttle cable, I haven't been able to get that done yet. Okay, all the plugs are in place. Those are secured. Got a few standoffs on here to keep it in place. I went in and uh, adjusted the rod to get a little bit more load on here. So now it's got more tension on it, on the uh, actuating arm. And this piece, as you can see, is broken right there. Another standoff right there of that spacer. I did switch out the alternator rather than uh, change out the plug. Had to do it anyway because of the. Uh, had to take all the mounts off just to get this uh, actuating arm set up. So I was like, oh, I'll just. Put the actuator on her, or the uh, old alternator on her. Kind of stand off there. We put two spacers, or actually one spacer behind the pulley to center the pulley up on the belt. Put one right back in there. And I had a longer bolt, so I used that. All the ground wires are back on and tight. This one also has three washers in it on the bottom mount. And, uh, filled up uh, the coolant. Now we'll just see how much it sucks back out. Burped it a few times. All right, now in the rear, then I'll show, show in here. Ugh. This right here, on the front of the county, I don't know if you can see it. That is a, it's, it's wearing. It's pressuring up, so the county has no movement whatsoever. It's firmly up against the lower part of the engine. This ear, right there. You can see where it's rubbing. So, I don't know, probably just to relieve some pressure until I can figure it out when I get home. I'll probably cut a hole in the lower part of the cowling so it doesn't rub on that. And I uh, put my carbon cowling on there just to confirm that there's space because there used to be a gap right here. So something happened to move it over not sure what. So, all right. If anything else uh, you want to see on here, well, let me know. Thanks for the help. Okay, we got a tarantula here. Ken is the only one with enough courage uh, <laughs> to try to get it away from our area. I don't know about Ken, but I'm gonna have a heart attack if that thing gets I near me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, after a little more testing, added another washer here to uh, center the belt. And everything else looks wonderful. I don't see any leaks, or I should say, we don't see any leaks. Everything looks good. Next we're gonna do is uh, check the propeller as far as what angle it is at now. And uh, check the engine position compared to the frame now and just uh, get some more data. Okay, here's Jumbo's old engine. Did a bore scope on each cylinder. Number one cylinder, the piston has a crack. Uh, appears to be detonation, um, metal fatigue, whatever. In any case, it has a crack in it. So, uh, okay, I found a weakness. Now, this engine had been running regular fuel, not premium. So it was more prone to a detonation. If anybody was going to have one, it was going to be me. So, uh, and I've also run uh, 6,000, 6,100 RPMs occasionally on uh, takeoff. So I pushed the limit and it looks like I found a weak point on it. So uh, moving forward, I'm going to uh, reduce my max RPM below 6,000 and uh, I'm going to retune the uh, ECU to run a little bit richer and uh, keep an eye on it. May very well just switch back to the uh, stock intake. Not sure, kind of looking into that at the moment. Um, but I, I really do want to run uh, just regular grade fuel, just uh, if I possibly can. But I think I just uh, seriously did just push it to the limits on this one. All right, so uh, we've got a new, um, uh, or I should say Jumbo's got a new engine. She's all running sweet. I've bore scoped it. All the pistons look just wonderful. She's flown, I don't know, 10, 11 hours maybe now, and uh, everything look is looking sweet. So I'm going to do a little bit of tuning, and uh, in, the, in the meantime, until I get the tuning done, I'll be uh, running uh, premium fuel.